in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up, and he will lift you up. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Sing that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. He said, I was blind, but now I see. And when we've been there 10,000 years, When we've been there 10,000 years, up there bright shining as the sun, say bright shining as the sun. So I will humble myself in the sight of the Lord. Oh, humble thyself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Say, and he will lift you up. Say, and he will lift you up. And he will lift you up. Say, and he will lift you up. One more time, say, and he will lift you to give him glory, praise, and honor. As we worship him this day, we are thankful for all of his rich and wonderful blessings, most importantly for his son, Jesus Christ. So let us lift up our voice and praise God with a fervor that lifts the roof right off of this building. Amen. 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 Good morning, church. Good morning, Good morning virtual church. 
so glad to see all of y'all this morning and to those of y'all who are tuning in. I'm so thankful that you guys have chosen uh, Stonecrest Church of Christ. Just told me we got a song leader in the house. Uh, so we'll have someone, a guest song leader, sing a song shortly. Um, but I just want to say that um, on this, this is our Youth Sunday. Uh, this weekend we have been celebrating and our youth. Uh, can we get a hand for the youth? <laughs> amen, amen, amen. I, I, I just have a soft, spark, a soft spot in my heart for the youth. And, and, I, and I tell them that all, 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 all the time. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have as much time to dedicate to that ministry as I would love to, but I want them to know that they have my utmost support, and, and I feel that they, all of these, all of these ministries are important uh, because our, our mission is to reach and save souls. That's what we're trying to do, young and old. Um, but I know from experience, you know, how the devil attacks our youth, and I tell you, I cannot imagine uh, trying to raise a youth, a younger youth, or be a youth in today's time. There's just so much things out there, so many things. And on my way, on our way this morning, you know, I, 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 I encountered some difficulties. Uh, my car dumped water on me. I had to go wipe myself off. I had to go clean off. I had to sit on a towel driving here. And then when I left the house, this deer decides for some reason that he was going to wait till I came and run in front of my car. But I'm here, y'all, praise God. But it made me think about that, you know, because it made me think that I'm not fighting against my car. I'm not fighting against that physical deer. It brought me to Ephesians 6, 12, and I want to read this for the youth because you have to realize this. We are in a war, and we are being used as pawns in this war. This war, it is, it's not between us and anything physical that we can see, but Ephesians 6, 12 reminds us that <laughs> we are fighting a spiritual war. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against a spiritual weakness, weakness in high places. That's for real, y'all. That's for real. I often remind myself of that scripture when I'm encountering struggles in life. And uh, it helps me. It helps me to realize that this is not about me. But I'm so glad that the victory is won. Y'all know we got the victory, don't we? <laughs> Amen, somebody. Amen. Uh, I do want to leave one quick song. Uh, about It's about going to heaven. It's about this, as we're dealing with this spiritual war down here, we are marching to Zion, aren't we? We're marching to Zion. So I'm going to pull these words. So I want y'all to sing this song with me, Marching to Zion. Come we that love the Lord and let our joys be known. For in the song with sweet accord, in the with sweet accord, and thus surround the throne, and thus surround the throne. Yes, we're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city, verse 1. Again, um, we that love the Lord and let our joys be known. Come join in a song with sweet chord. Join in a song with sweet chord. And thus surround the throne and thus surround Y'all, we're marching, we're marching to Zion, beautiful, the Zion, we're marching upward to Zion, a beautiful city, we're marching, we're marching, we're mar marching to, yeah, the beautiful 
Beautiful Zion, we're marching over to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Amen. Let us reverently bow as we go and approach the throne of our Heavenly Father. Most holy and everlasting Father in heaven, dear God, we do humbly approach your throne that flows of your grace and your mercy. We come, dear Father, first and foremost asking for the forgiveness of our sins. We realizing, dear Father, that we have missed the mark and that we are not too stubborn, too high-minded to realize that we need your forgiveness. Help us, dear Father, as we continue to walk with you that our walk will be more perfectly. We come thanking you for your son Jesus Christ who came into this world and died on the cross of Calvary for our sins, our salvation, our fellowship with you and our redemption. We thank you dear father for the love that you just have for us and watching over us and keeping us day by day blessing us as we go along the way, dangers that we didn't even see, but you saw and you kept them away. You put a fence around us to protect us and keep us, keep our families, keep our children safe. We ask your blessings upon our government officials, both federally and state and local. We ask, dear Father, that they may make laws that will allow us the freedom to continue in your word and with you without, without being harassed. We ask, dear Father, for your blessings upon those who are bereaved among us, those who are sick among us, touch them with your healing and comforting hand. Those who are discouraged and who have lost hope or lost their way, that they may be encouraged, that we may be a tool that you may use in helping them to realize that you are the comforter and the encourager of their life. We ask that you be with those who are seeking the way of truth, that we may also be a light to them, that they may see us and we may see them, and that we may offer, give to them your word. Be with us in all our undertakings of life. We ask that you be with us in this service. Bless Brother Barclay as he come before us, giving him the ready recollection of the things in which he has studied. Bless his wife and his family. Bless our elders and our deacons and their families. Help them in their leading and guiding of your people. Be with us as we continue on. In your name we pray and give thanks. Amen. 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 stand for a responsive reading. I'll begin and then the congregation will say the, uh, the following verses. We're in the book of Proverbs chapter 22. A good name is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. Congregation. Rich and poor have rich in common. The Lord is the maker of them all. The 
prudent see danger and take refuge, but the simple keep going and pay the penalty. Congregation. In the paths of the wicked are snares and pitfalls, but those who would preserve their life stay far from them. All together, our children are on the way they should go, and even when they are old, they will not turn. And I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. He keeps sweeter and sweeter when the days go by. Oh, what a love between my and I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over. He keeps a blessing me, blessing me, and over and over, and over and over, over again. Say, he keeps blessing me, oh, over and over and over, over and over, over. Yeah, he gets sweeter. All the days go by, yeah, oh, what a love between my Lord and I keep falling in love with him oh, over and oh, over again. Amen. What's your name? Michael. We got Michael from Hillcrest who's going to give us a song. Can we give him a hand? This is one of those youths I'm talking about. Amen. All right. I'm going uh, to be starting singing uh, Lily in the Valley. Oh, there's a lily. It's in the valley. It's in the valley. And it's bright as a morning star. Oh, oh a lily. It's in the valley. And it's bright as a morning star. There is a lily. It's in the valley. Oh, when it's bright as a morning star, oh, there's joy, it's in the valley, and then it's bright as the morning star, there is joy, I found it's in the valley, and it's bright as the morning star, hey. Amen, amen, amen. Good job, Michael. Okay. All right now. Can we give him another hand? Amen. That's awesome. Well, that brings joy in my heart, I tell you. I got that joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Amen, amen. <laughs> amen. That's exciting. That was unexpected, so that was, a, that was a blessing for me. Thank you so much. 
Thank you again so much. Oh, Lord. Lord. Um, I'm going to try. Uh, we're going to sing My God is Awesome. I'm going to, uh, y'all forgive me. I'm trying to get these props out the way. Uh, <laughs> we're going to sing My God. My God is awesome. He has moved mountains. But we're going to sing it. It's a little bit different this morning. So if y'all kind of, I know y'all can. So if y'all kind of just work with me on this, uh, we'll sing it just a little bit different. Um, on the uh, verses, uh, when, we, when I sing the verses, this will be your part. Awesome, God is awesome, God is awesome, God is awesome, my God is awesome. God is awesome, God is awesome, God is awesome. And then we'll get into, my God is awesome, oh, oh awesome, oh, oh awesome, oh awesome. That's it. Y'all got that? I'll do all the hard work if y'all just do that right there for me, okay? <laughs> No, okay. All right, let's start. Let's sing again. Awesome. God is awesome. God is awesome. God is awesome. My God is awesome. Yeah. God is awesome. God is awesome. God is awesome. Keep singing. My God is awesome. Yeah. Sounds good, God is Keep on Keep singing right there My God is uh, Again, God is uh, Yeah, God is uh, uh -huh. God is uh, Keep singing, my God is uh, he can move mountains, he keeps me in the valley, and hides me from the rain. My God, my God is awesome. He can move mountains, keeps me in the valley, hides me from the rain. Of course, my God is awesome. So awesome, oh awesome, oh oh again, my God, my God is awesome. Oh, oh awesome, oh yeah, oh. Back to the verse, my God, my God is awesome. God, God is awesome. Yeah, God, say my God, my God is, God, God is, God, God is awesome, God is to the course, my God is awesome, oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 my God, my God is a, oh, 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 y'all sound good. Back to the verse, my God, now, my God is a, God, God, God is a, he keeps me in the valley, hides me from the rain. Yeah, my God is all. He, he can move mountains. He keeps me in the valley, and he hides me from the rain. Do course, my God, my God is all. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, 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 my God, my God is a oh, 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 o
let's do the second verse. My God is awesome. God is awesome. God, God is awesome. God, God is awesome. Second verse, my God is awesome. God, God is awesome. God, God is awesome. God is awesome. Who's this verse? My God, keep going. Awesome. He heals me when I'm broken. Strength when I am weak and to heaven he will reign. The course, my God, is a whoa, 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 One more time, my God, is a whoa, whoa, some whoa. Then we go to this part. Don't you know he's holy? He's a He's holy, he's holy, he's holy, he's holy, God is awesome, whoa, awesome, he's great, somebody say he's great, he's great, he's great, he's great, God is awesome, yeah. God is awesome, don't you know he's a provider, a provider, 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 God is awesome. Whoa, He protects me. He's a protector, 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 protector. Yes, He's awesome. God is awesome, and don't you know He's a healer, a healer. He can heal me. He is able. God is awesome. Whoa, he's awesome. And don't you know he's a savior? A savior, a savior, a savior. God is, yeah, say God is. And the best part is, don't you know that he saved me? He saved me. He saved me, God saved me, cause God is some, whoa, and I'm happy to know that he saved you, he saved you, saved you too, my God, so oh God, so oh God, he's awesome, whoa, awesome, my God is awesome. God is awesome, God is awesome, God is, don't you know who my friend, my God is awesome, yeah, God is awesome, God is awesome, God is awesome, amen, good job. Posse here with him, uh, but uh, he did it. We do also want to acknowledge with grateful appreciation uh, Michael uh, for the very fine uh, way he uh, He led that song this morning. singing, lifting up your voices in praise uh, and in adoration to God and to God alone who is uh, worthy to be saved, uh, to be praised. Uh, we also want to express our appreciation to those uh, uh, who are virtual, uh, worshiping with us uh, online this morning. We welcome you. We 
thank you for uh, uh, tuning in and worshiping uh, with us, giving the plethora of other places you could have uh, gone this morning. Thank you uh, so very, very uh, much. Listen, we have a number of folk uh, who are uh, out this morning due to illness. This is the time of the year. Uh, it's it's um, overcast, it's raining, it's drizzly, and uh, uh, this is the kind of weather that is uh, uh, rather challenging. Uh, but of course, we have to make the uh, adjustment. And, uh, Rachel, Rachel Gibbard is now uh, at home. Uh, Brother Crawford is not here this morning. He's at home tending uh, Sister uh, uh, Urena uh, Crawford, uh, who had surgery. Uh, on the last week, we ask that you certainly uh, pray for uh, them. Uh, he called me on uh, Wednesday after the surgery had taken place and uh, shared with me that uh, uh, he was uh, uh, taking care of her full time uh, in terms of cooking meals and everything else. And when he told me that, I went to pray. <laughs> uh, amen, son. praying for her health and full recovery. Uh, um, I've, I've had a sinus infection uh, all week long. Uh, yesterday's first time out of the bed uh, all week. Uh, wanted to come over here and see the good things that Chris was doing with uh, uh, the conference. Made every effort to stay away from um, uh, everybody. Made the mistake last Sunday morning of, of uh, washing my hair. I know better than uh, and then getting out in that weather. Uh, and it, it certainly had its toll and ended up in the doctor's office on Tuesday uh, morning. So I'll just say hi to you from a distance, uh, even uh, on today. But yesterday I was on my way home and uh, I remembered that uh, uh, Brother C is taking care of Sister C. Uh, so uh, I stopped by my favorite barbecue place. Uh, and called him and said, meet me on 138. Uh, so let me sh be sure that uh, 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 didn't have any vegetables, but sure had some good chicken and uh, ribs. And, uh, so you see to it that uh, she get back up on her feet real quick. And so please pray uh, for uh, them. Uh, David Ferguson uh, is uh, having weekly blood transfusions now and uh, Please keep him uh, in thought and in prayer. We are pleased to announce that Anthony Hunter, after uh, almost two months now, is out of the hospital and rehabilitation, uh, and he is at home. Uh, to God, uh, to the glory. We spoke with Brother Cook last week. Sister Cook is on the men. Uh, Lisa Walker's grandson, Zay, uh, about 13, 14 years old, uh, was hospital, uh, hospitalized on last week. Uh, uh, he was released on the, uh, Friday uh, to go home, so let's be remembering uh, this young man. Brother and Sister Cochran uh, are both ill, along with uh, Brother Gatson and his wife. Uh, Ricky Middle uh, funeralized uh, uh, his nephew on yesterday in Arkansas who was murdered uh, on uh, last week and uh, Ricky will be traveling back uh, on today. Um, uh, we even got news that uh, Trini Williams uh, had been hospitalized, uh, reached out to her via text this morning to let her know that uh, she'll be in our thoughts uh, and in our prayers and her response was, bro, be they already working. Uh, and to God uh, be the glory. Sean, you have an update on that? Is she back at home? No, she's still in the hospital. Uh, his wife called. She's still in the hospital, still undergoing tests. They still are not sure what the story of uh, Julia Smith is. Well, certainly keep her in thought uh, and uh, uh, in prayer. Uh, we'll have more to say before the service is over uh, about Pastors Appreciation Month. Uh, <laughs> I got my updated list here. Uh, 
<laughs> and uh, you have been so good and gracious all my life. Got everything I've asked for. Uh, and uh, you've been so kind, so gracious, uh, and so generous. Uh, thank you for uh, remembering uh, us. We appreciate that so very, very much. Uh, this is October 30, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, 31 days in October. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, you got about 24 hours left. All right. uh, so thank you uh, so very, very much. Uh, we have celebrated with our young people uh, youth weekend. Uh, this is the very first time that uh, this event has uh, uh, taken place. Uh, Vanessa and Chris and uh, there are a number of folks uh, who have been working with them in the facilitation and the execution uh, of this weekend. And I understand that there it will be an additional worship service uh, after the meal. Uh, of course, this is fifth Sunday here at Stonecrest, and every fifth Sunday uh, we just have a meal together. Uh, well, that meal will. Uh, happen immediately following the worship service will feed you. Uh, they didn't want uh, uh, you leaving and then having to come back. Uh, we know how tempting that is. Uh, not to do it particularly on a day uh, that's wet and cloudy and overcast on today. Uh, and so a meal uh, has been prepared for both you uh, as well as for the rest of us. And we hope that uh, uh, you would join us in that meal of fellowship. Uh, as a continuation of, uh, and Chris will tell you more about the activities uh, for the final session for the young people uh, on this afternoon. Uh, but he uh, uh, asked me whether or not uh, he could do the preaching uh, this morning. Uh, and uh, uh, as a continuation of the weekend, we graciously consented uh, to him sharing a message with both youth and uh, seasoned adults uh, on this morning. Amen. And so after another verse uh, of another song, uh, our own uh, youth uh, minister, uh, Chris Ballou, will come uh, and share. I'm gonna trade my earthly home for a better one, bright and fair. A Christ plan to prepare a mansion for his children in the air. I'll join him in that. If there's no sorrows can be sweet night. A mansion robe. Oh Lord, I want a mansion. I want a mansion robe. Crown in glory there, oh, peace and love will always so forever let, let me oh your throne, sir. Lord, please preserve my man. I want a robe. Say the weather there is always fair. There's sunshine day and that means no cold, no rain, or yeah, for the sun, for bright, yeah, I'll need no heavy, cause I'll just wrap my robe around when I, oh, Lord, I want a robe, yeah, I want a man, mention, mention, robe, and uh, in glory there, and and love will always, uh, forever let, let me, let me your throne, throne surround. And Lord, please preserve, I want a robe. One more verse. It say my head is bowed and bloody now for the work that I've tried to down here. But one thing I'll be real, yeah, with the crown, yeah, I'll Cause there'll be no cause for a frown when I Oh, my Lord, I want a robe Oh, I want a mansion 
a mansion robe and a in glory there for oh, my lord he yeah, will always uh, forever let let me hold your throne surround lord please preserve I want to roll and crown. I failed to mention that uh, uh, Sister Lewis uh, brought Brother Lewis home from the uh, hospital this week. And she was also involved herself, not with Brother Lewis, uh, but she was involved in a car wreck <laughs> where the car was totaled. <laughs> Here's the shout. She walked away. Oh, okay, let me try this side. Let's, y'all look more spiritual this morning. Uh, the car was total, yeah. oh, yeah. but grace and mercy yeah. allowed her to walk away. Uh, so please be particularly praying for her. Reach out to her uh, during the course uh, of the week. All right, good morning. Good morning, y'all. Good, good morning to uh, my brothers and sisters in Christ, good morning, all of Stonecrest Church of Christ, all of Hillcrest Church of Christ is joining us this morning, um, all the love, and um, anyone from Locust Grove Church of Christ, Renaissance Church of Christ, um, so many other churches of Christ that's been, um, you know, showing us love and support for this youth conference that's been going on this weekend. Um, so at this time, you know, yeah, y'all can give a hand to all the youth that's been, you know, putting in love and dedication to the Lord over this weekend for sure. Because um, they've been just inspiring us and uplifting us. You know, the goal was for us, some of the youth ministers and youth leaders, to get together and inspire them. But all these youth been doing is giving us inspiration all weekend. So uh, just want to definitely give them a hand. Um, at this time, um, I want to ask uh, if Sister Vanessa and Sister Nadir can come up real quick. I don't know if Sister Nadir is here. Brother, Brother Pickett, she's, not here, right she's not here right now. Okay, that's, that's fine. Can y'all hear me okay? Yes, yes ma'am. Oh, wait. Is that, no, no, you don't, you don't have to. Go. Yeah. All right. So y'all see Sister Vanessa right here? Um, can y'all can y'all see my slides also? Okay. I'll wait for y'all to see my slides. Yeah, if we can get... Like our smart team be working diligently on this stuff, so you know I'm just waiting on them. We ain't in no rush. <laughs> y'all, y'all can't be that hungry yet. I ain't even started. So, <laughs> all right. So this is what we've been doing this weekend. You know our youth conference, um, our first youth conference, and we're gonna have it annually. And um, you know I just need y'all to give a resounding round of applause to Sister Vanessa right here <laughs> and Sister Nadira because um, you know y'all just. You wouldn't believe the amount of work that they put in for the young people. Uh, you see them still during the conference putting in work. And, you know, they just tell me to get up and preach. But they really been doing, you know, pretty much most of the work in all of the meetings. And, um, you know, if I could ask uh, Brother Reggie Osborne to, to stand also. This is the youth minister from Hillcrest Church of Christ. And uh, he's been so supportive and on meetings with me. Um, him and Brother Blake, me from Renaissance. And, you know, um, you, can, you, can, you can see him in some of these pictures. Uh, you know, he's been getting down and, and, and supporting youth all weekend. Appreciate Sister Vanessa. So Sister Vanessa does so much more um, year-round for our youth ministry. So, you know, this, this first conference was her idea. And she came up with the theme. And every step of the way, this youth conference has kind of been her baby. So, you know, I just want y'all, when y'all see Sister Vanessa and Sister Nadira, uh, her husband said that she's not here right now. But, you know, her children are Jamil Jr. and, and Jay. And um, 
you know, she, ever since they've come to Stonecrest, has been on board with me and Sister Vanessa and Sister Nadira Pickett. She just puts in so much work putting up with us as well. So, you know, I just want to give them so much thanks. And uh, my wife's not going to stand up because, you know, she don't even want me calling her name right now. But <laughs> she, she, she is a big part of the youth ministry as well. She likes to be real behind the scenes. And she don't never want notoriety or to have her picture anywhere. But, you know, um, half the stuff that actually makes sense that comes out of my mouth in a youth meeting is really coming from her. And, you know, I just turn around like, yeah, that was a good idea. You know, so y'all give my wife some love because she's a real big part of this youth ministry as well. Uh, and so, yeah, just want to thank all of y'all and Brother B and Sister B, of course, and the whole Stonecrest congregation for the support that y'all give to our youth ministry. And so I ain't going to be long today. Uh, I'm going to be as strong as possible. But um, I just wanted to show y'all some of, some of this weekend. I just had to really refrain from flooding y'all with all of these pictures we was taking yesterday. So I just picked a few. Um, as you can see, that's my special agent badge. The theme, you know, that Sister Vanessa was going with for our youth conference is um, kind of like a, a spy type Mission Impossible, but Mission Not Impossible um, theme. So... That's my special agent badge. Every youth that participated had their own special agent badge. Um, and we kind of had our own secret agent thing and a secret agency going on on this entire weekend. And um, as you can see on my badge, my code name is Deep Alpha. So, you know, if you're not part of the secret society, you don't have to know what Deep Alpha means. Just know if your initials are also KB, then you probably have the same code name. And, you know, we code, we code name special agent twins. And, um, you can see Brother Reggie Osborne in that other picture getting down for the youth yesterday. So he was, he was lifting us up, too. And um, later on this afternoon, like Brother B mentioned, after the service, we're going to go have a meal by Food for the Soul. So much. Oh, give a hand for Food for the Soul, too. Y'all know for the conference that they came through. They blessed us yesterday um, with, a great, with the best lunch. And it's going to be an even better meal for this afternoon. So y'all know how Food for the Soul does. Sister Blondie and her whole um, team, and they go bless us with a meal after service. And then don't go home, because then right after that, we'll continue with the last part of youth conference. We'll have some words from the Hillcrest Youth Minister, Brother Reggie Osborne, and the Renaissance Church of Christ Youth Minister, Brother Warren Blakeney. Um, he won't arrive to this afternoon, because he had to take care of some stuff at Renaissance this morning. But um, without further ado, I just had to show y'all that. And um, just to express how much of an overwhelming blessing it is for me to experience a team like Sister Vanessa, Sister Nadir, and my wife, um, to even how much of a blessing it was for me to be here still this week um, because um, as, as some of you know like a week before last I didn't know if I was going to be here today wow. uh, I didn't know if I was going to be able to participate in these events today um, so for those who do not know uh, I'll make a long story short I basically I was having some you know some, some headaches every now and then they were reoccurring it made my third time having them you know I have some headaches um, and then the headaches would be preceded by my, uh, a loss of vision a little bit. I would lose peripheral vision in my eyes a little bit. And then um, later on in that evening, I would start, you know, um, vomiting, and I would get really sick. So every time that happened, I'm thinking that's food poisoning because I'm getting this headache. I'm getting really sick. And, you know, after I throw up, I feel better. You know, when you're sick, after you throw up, you feel fine. You're like, okay, I'm good. So the first time, I'm like, okay, well, they ain't cooked that. Sausage biscuit all the way at Bojangles like they were supposed to. And it's a true story. My wife, though, broke low every single moment it happened. The first time, I'm like, they didn't cook that sausage biscuit all the way, so I'm sick. You know, um, it was so bad, they made me lose a little bit of vision, and I'm throwing up now. So that's, I'm not going to eat on Fulton Industrial anymore. And um, the second time, I just thought the restaurant didn't cook their chicken all the way, and um, lost some vision in my eyes, and then, you know, had some sickness. And then, so this third time, the week before last, um, I made some food. And um, I was like, well, you know, me and my wife both ate this, this time, so she's not sick. And it, 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 I had some vision loss, and um, my headache came back, and I was throwing up again. So after that time, um, my wife was like, you know, you, you, you know how wise she get to um, Googling and reading as soon as stuff starts going wrong. So she was like, you need to go to the doctor because, um, you know, you're not supposed to be. I don't think you're supposed to be having any vision loss with food poisoning. Um, and I'm like, no, I think it's just food poisoning, you know. And um, she was like, well, I think you need to see a doctor in the morning. You know, of course, the morning came. Um, I had been throwing up all night, so I felt better. I was like, you know, I'm going to still take off work, but I don't think I need to go to the doctor anymore. I feel just fine. You know, she was like, no, I, th I think we still need to go to the doctor. So we, I went to the doctor, and um, 
you know, they were talking about my symptoms, and then they were just like, hey, this doesn't sound like food poisoning. Your symptoms sound like a migraine to us. It sound like you're having reoccurring migraines. It was like uh, everything about you, everything else about you is perfectly healthy. Um, so, you know, we just going to, we don't see anything else wrong with you. We checked your heart. We checked your blood. We ran tests. So um, we just, we're going to run a CAT scan. Um, the, guy, the doctor was like, um, I don't think anything's going to come up in it. Um, but we just want to run it just in case. So me and my wife, we sat there. I went and got a CAT scan. And then we sat there for a couple of hours waiting. You know, we making plans. She was like, um, all right, so when we leave here, it was Friday. It was like, okay. She was like, what you want to eat? Um, Chick-fil-A. I'm like, yeah, Chick-fil-A Friday. You know, I'm like, we go go pick up our son from daycare, go home, watch some shows, and, you know, eat some Chick-fil-A. And then we're sitting there waiting for about um, five or six hours. And the doctor comes back, and um, he said, hey, I um, just want to let you know. He was like, your CAT scan results just came back in. They found, we found an aneurysm on your brain. And so um, I was like, okay, all right. Uh, appreciate that, doc. Um, <laughs> I was like, okay, I appreciate that, Doc. Um, okay, so, you know, and then he was like, yeah, so, um, you know, with the aneurysm on your brain, um, for everybody who don't know, you know, that's like a bulge, a little bulge in the blood vessels yeah. on your brain. Um, and if, if that ruptures, um, it causes you to have a stroke. Yeah. And so um, he was like, hey, you're really lucky that we caught it because, you know, if it could have ruptured, you would have had a stroke. For, for anybody who's ever had a stroke before or come to somebody in their family who has had a stroke, you know, that can be um, very fatal in a matter of seconds to minutes, um, if, not, if not, you know, treated well, if not rushed to the hospital, or just depending on the situation. Um, and sometimes if it's not fatal, it can cause, you know, irreversible brain damage. Sometimes it can um, hinder people's ability to walk or write or speak. So the doctor was just letting me know how lucky I was that we caught the aneurysm. And I was just like, okay, well, that's great, doc. Um, you know, so what time can I leave? And he was just like, well, you know, um, my recommendation is we think, you need, we think we need to put you on an ambulance and send you to Emory to go see a neurosurgeon. And I was like, all right. Um, I was like, is there any way that, you know, I can follow up with this appointment at Emory another day? I was like, because we have stuff to do. And um, he was just like, well, Mr. Blue, I can't force you. Um, but I, I highly recommend that you get on the ambulance and that you go to Emory to see a neurosurgeon this evening um, so they can talk about the next steps. Um, and so I looked at my wife and she looked at me like, hmm. <laughs> what? And I'm like, well, I'm like, we got to pick Chris up from daycare. I was like, and I'm hungry. We just talked about going to get Chick-fil-A today. <laughs> and, you know, she, she was like, and then, you know, the doctor reminded me, he said, well, you know, sometimes we don't, we never plan for these things, right. but, you know, this is, this is the course of action we have to take now. And um, of course, that, that whole experience in that moment, I was realizing to myself that, you know, we, we spend so much time making our own plans. And I was so set in what I had and what we were going to have planned for the evening. You know, I wasn't paying attention to, to the situation in my health. But God has a funny way of, of sometimes just making us slow down and stop and, and sit down and listen. That's what I, I really learned through that experience, that God has a funny way of making us stop and sit down and listen. And when God is trying to, when, when the Holy Spirit is trying to speak to us, and when God is trying to tell us something, it's really best to go ahead and sit down and listen before the Holy Spirit got to raise his voice. Okay? And so, you know, I, I got on the ambulance because um, I wanted to be obedient to my wife. I still was hungry. I wanted to leave. I felt fine, but, you know. Tim wasn't letting me walk out of Kaiser without, without getting on no ambulance and going to see a neurosurgeon. So I got on the ambulance, um, and then, well, really, we, we waited the rest of the night um, to about 3 a.m. The ambulance finally came, my first time being on the ambulance, and uh, went to Emory. And so we got there that night. Um, they were talking about the different courses of um, possible action with the aneurysm. They said, hey, we're going to have to wait till the neurosurgeon get here and look at it. But, you know, it's either, we're just so glad it didn't rupture. The courses of action would be they have to, you know, go in there and clip it. Um, they have to maybe stick a catheter through your back and put some dye in your brain so that you, we can visualize it. Um, um, and, you know, hopefully that we don't have to do any brain surgery um, to, to avoid you having a stroke in the future. It was like, in any case, Mr. Blue, we know all of that sounds like not ideal, but you should just be happy that, you know, you would avoid a stroke. It was like, uh, you're very young. We don't know how someone who's 30 has an aneurysm, but we're so glad we caught it early. And they were like, in my mind, it wasn't an idea because last week we had, like, homecoming, right? So I'm having other plans in my head. I'm like, okay, we need her to get on this ambulance, let the neurosurgeon clear me because 
I'm trying to get to our our church anniversary. You know, I'm trying to see the youth. I'm trying to see the family. I'm like, we got cousins supposed to be taken to the. And Tam's telling me like, you, we might not make the homecoming. We gotta make sure that you're healthy. So, um, and thank you to like brother the Nixons and all of y'all who started praying. I mean, instantly before I even got to Emory, y'all was already texting me, uh, praying for me. Almost everybody in this room. Um, by the time the neurosurgeon came. I was going to get an MRI, I came back, Tamara was like, brother, sister Nixon just left the hospital, came to see you. I was like, how did I get the address? We just found out that I was going to be in this room 20 minutes ago. So um, y'all showed me so much love in um, that whole situation. Um, just reminded me. I'm sorry, I'm going to get this out y'all way. So that, that whole situation just reminded me that... Um, you know, it's God's plans. It's not, it's not my plans. Yeah. And that regardless of our plans, you know, you don't, you don't want to make the Holy Spirit make you have to sit down. Okay, so we, after we did all of that, um, the, the, the neurosurgeon came back, right? And I, I had the MRI. And so I'm thinking through all of these different scenarios and situations they're talking about because I've accepted, okay, I'm not going to do any of these other plans. I may actually have to um, stay in the hospital longer than I expect. Um, I just want to be alive, and I just want to be here for my wife and my son and all the other youth and my other family members, you know, siblings who, who you know, depend on me. And uh, whatever they have to do, I'm like, if I got to get brain surgery, Lord, I'm praying. I'm like, if I have to get whatever I have to do, just help me come out, okay, and I'm fine. I'm going to follow whatever way you're taking me. And so... Um, even though they're telling me, you know, if you have to do this procedure, you know, you're not going to be able to lift 10 pounds or for the next couple of weeks. I'm like, so when I leave here, I can't, I can't go pick up my son. I can't hold him or anything like that. And um, so I'm going through a lot of different emotions as y'all are texting me and, and supporting me and giving me this love and cause. And the neurosurgeon comes back um, that next day. And I've already said in my mind, you know, it's going to be one of these three procedures. And I'm, I'm, I'm not going home today. I'm going to have to stay here for at least two or three more days, at the longest, maybe a week. And so the neurosurgeon comes in, and the neurosurgeon's like, okay, we just looked at your MRI, Mr. Blue, and um, we don't see an aneurysm anymore. Hallelujah. And they said, we don't, they said, we don't see an aneurysm. It was like, so um, it was like, I'm going to just go ahead and get your paperwork ready, and um, you can go home today. And, you know, I couldn't believe what I was hearing at the time. You know, I'm like, okay, thanks, doctor. And as soon as the doctor walked out of the room, my wife just looking at me for a reaction because she knew I just been holding in. I'm ready. I'm so ready to go. And so I was, I was so excited when I heard that, and I couldn't believe it. So some people, right, my, my family was making jokes about it, right? Some people might have felt like, you know, well, the aneurysm probably was never there. Right? Maybe the, the, the CAT scan at Kaiser misread something or, or, or got something wrong, right? And some people may feel like, you know, God did something in that. Yeah. Right? And we know what happened to it, right? We know what happened to the aneurysm. But see, what we've been trying to get, 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 teach the youth is that everybody not going to be able to crack that code. Okay, some people might feel like, well, it wasn't an aneurysm there. But we know what really happened. And, and what we need to understand sometimes is everybody not going to understand your mission. Right. Everybody not going to be able to understand. Everybody not going to be able to crack that code. Everybody not going to understand your connection with the intel that you're receiving. Okay? Sorry. All right. So Jesus said that himself, right? In Matthew 13, 10, 11, it says the disciples came to him and asked, why do you speak in parables? He replied, because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to who? Yeah. You and not to who? Yeah. Them. Okay? Brothers and sisters, can I suggest to y'all that, young people, can I suggest to y'all that right now, in this current generation, even in this very moment, that you are perceiving things that your peers can't perceive, yeah. that you're seeing things that the folks on your job and kids at your school can't see. That you're hearing things that they can't hear. That you're understanding things that they're not going to understand. Okay? Jesus said, but, oh, Jesus went on to say, this is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. 
He went on to say, but blessed are your eyes because they see. And blessed are your ears because they hear. For truly, I tell you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but do not see it. And long to hear what you hear and do not hear it. And Jesus said, blessed are your eyes because they see. And your ears because they hear. Everybody not going to be able to crack that code that's in this Bible. Everybody not going to be able to crack that code of the relationship with God and Jesus Christ. Okay? In verse 17, it says, truly I tell you. Did I just read that for y'all? Okay, right. So look, in verse 17, you got so many people still in this generation today longing to know the secrets that you're learning about eternal life. Right? They looking. And they searching. And they reaching. Like sometimes they really be reaching. Okay? In every textbook and every piece of knowledge they can find. So that they can make new claims to who is God. How to elevate your spirit. How to create your own heaven. Right? And try to lead you to believe that your way and that this book right here is wrong. Okay? That's why Jesus spoke in parables. Okay, because everyone didn't need to understand what was going on in this book. Everyone wasn't going to appreciate what was going on in this building, in this body of Christ. Okay, that's why Jesus spoke in parables. Because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you and not to them. That's why he spoke in parables. And that's why our life sometimes plays out in, into parables. That's why our life experiences are sometimes like parables. Because y'all know what parables were. Right? Y'all know where the parables were, where Jesus would sometimes come and tell a quick little story uh -huh. that they could relate to, yeah. and then to give them an image of what the kingdom of heaven is like, or what going through struggles and being a child of God is like. Right? As in, as, by the dictionary, a parable is defined as a simple story used to illustrate a moral or spiritual lesson. Yeah. Right? A simple story used to illustrate a moral or spiritual lesson. And people out there are searching for these spiritual lessons. Yeah. Meanwhile, Jesus speaking to you in parables, using your life experiences to illustrate lessons for you, to illustrate moral and spiritual lessons for you. So no, don't worry about the people who don't understand your spiritual lessons, okay? Because Jesus speaking to you in cold every day. They searching for spiritual lessons in every other textbook or Google, but Jesus speaking to you through this book, through life situations, and speaking to you in cold because you special agents, okay? That's why the title of this lesson is called Christ is Classified, okay? Christ is Classified. It ain't for everybody. It's not for everybody on the bus. It's not for everybody at school. It's not for everybody who say they're the wisest person and they got all this knowledge that they done found about God or, the, or our ancient people. That's, that, it ain't for them. It's classified. It's for you. I need you to know that's why you ducking and dodging lasers. Okay? That's why you decoding booby traps in your life that your enemies are setting for you. That's why you got ops. Hey, look, look. I got some of you looking at me like, bro, Chris, what you know about ops? I got ops. All right, I got you looking at me like, man, stop, just stop. I got ops. Okay, Satan a op. Satan a op. And he working through every single one of your ops. All right. Trying to push your buttons. Trying to get you to react to people emotionally. That's why I got to stay sharp. And that's why I got to stay vigilant. Because the devil is constantly trying to get me to be, he, the, the devil is constantly trying to get to me mentally. And he constantly trying to get to you mentally and emotionally. And the devil is constantly trying to attack your heart and make you respond emotionally to someone. The devil is constantly trying to use someone around you to make you, like I said, react emotionally to somebody. You think that argument in school is about who's winning and about who's right? You think the person running their mouth on the bus is about showing who got in the hands and who can fight? The devil trying to take you out mentally. Yeah. Right, right. The devil trying to take you out spiritually. Yeah. It ain't about who can win that fight. It ain't about who right in the argument. The devil trying to do something else right there to you. Right. Right. He not worried about some knucklehead in the classroom. 
Y'all like that word knucklehead? I learned that from my brother Reggie this weekend. I, I like that. He was using that for the young people, knuckleheads. But the devil not worried about them knuckleheads on the bus. He trying to attack your soul. The devil don't care if you win that argument or not. The devil trying to take you out of character. But that's why it feels like sometimes you're going through things no one else has to. Right? That's why it feels like sometimes you're going through things no one else understands. Because you're agents of the impossible. That's what we've been talking about all weekend, right? That's been our whole thing. That, without, that with God, nothing is impossible. And you guys are special agents of the impossible. You are the change that this world needs. You are the agents that God calls on to take on tasks that none of your peers can take on. Yes, sir. That's why you're going through stuff that it seems like, why ain't nobody else going through this? Why it's always happening to me? Because God's calling on you. He's not calling on them. Right. He's calling on you to take on stuff that they can't deal with. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are the top agents in this earth. You are the special agents. You know those spy movies where it's always that top spy. You got numbers maybe one through a thousand spies, right? So for those little missions, they may call on number 800. They may call on number 672. They may call on number 234 for a really hard mission. But for that boss that no one can take down, number one sitting in his office, and he, and he waiting. Or number one just always missing on the hardest missions. And when it's time to take out that boss, number one ready. Number one not sitting there like, why y'all coming at me? Why y'all giving me the hardest missions? Because he know. can nobody else in the agency take that on. So when stuff is happening to you, you know why it's happening to you. Because only you can handle it. Only you a child of God that can take on that mission. So I don't care what it is. And I don't care who said what or who doubts you. Overcome it. Pray to God and overcome it. Do what you were born to do. What you were called by God to do. Do what he created you to do. Endure it. And if you don't know this, the specifics of your purpose yet, that's fine. Just start there. Just start with that. Endure whatever storm and hard times come your way. Because that's your purpose. That's what you were built for. To endure things other people could not endure. So this has been our thing. Luke chapter 1 verse 37. Can y'all guess who, who picked that scripture? You know that. Sister Vanessa picked Luke 1, 37 to be our, our theme for the weekend. So that's what we've been teaching on, that with God, nothing shall be impossible. And so we've been talking about a lot of different things this weekend. Um, like I said, Brother, Brother Reggie gave them some good messages yesterday uh, to, you know, talk about how they got to be lit for Jesus. He had a great acronym for that. And then he gave a good lesson to the adults that if we're going to prepare young people for the impossible, then we, as the adults, have to be living a life that is centered with Christ. Amen. And that goes for the youth, too. But just understand that if, if we're going to be preparing youth for the impossible, and this, this, this brother Reggie's sermon, I mean, I could add like I didn't know where it came from, but this is what he was teaching the adults yesterday, that if we're going to prepare youth for the impossible, we have to be living a life that is centered in Christ. Amen. Okay, because it's, a, it's enough that they get in, in, these so, in the social feeds that's talking about the different or spirituality things and the different ways to achieve the impossible on your own. But what we get, what we need to understand is that it's with, with God nothing should be impossible. You're not just elevating on your own. And if you're not living a life that's centered with Christ, then you can't just pray and achieve the impossible. Because then you go wonder why you're struggling. But you have to be living according to what Christ is telling us to do in the Bible. And you got to be living according to the way that your mama or your grandma and them taught you and your granddaddy and them taught you how to stay in, in alignment with Christ. So if your friends start telling you, well, that's outdated, you know, that's just this old school. They just did that because that's all they knew. But the Bible is this and it's that. That's, that's going to take you off center with Christ. And then when you're not achieving the impossible, you're going to be wondering why. Because you're searching in the wrong books. And you're searching on the wrong website. Okay? You got to stay close to the Bible. And you have to stay close to Christ in order to achieve these things. Okay? Because you're the one. You're that special agent. I'm sorry. You that special agent, okay? You the one at your school, or you the one on your job, or you the one in your family. You the one that when the devil comes walking around, 
you know, marching, trying to brag. I got the whole world in my hand. Because we looking around, and it look like the devil got the whole world in the palm of his hand right now. It's a lot of crazy stuff our youth are going through that we stand. We're going through it, too. But for all of us who think the youth are not going through nothing, just look at the world around us, what they had to come into, what they're experiencing right now. They in the world right now, and the devil walk around bragging, he got the whole world in his hands. But I just want you to know, if you was a young person at the conference this weekend, or you a young person inspired by the conference this weekend, you the one. Okay? You the one at your school, you the one amongst your peers, that when the devil come walking around bragging about how he got the whole world in his hand, he said, Jesus, I know the song say you got the whole world in your hand. He like, look, I got the whole world in my hand. Look at everything going on right now. God says, have you tried my servant, Job? God said, have you tried my servant, Isley? God said, have you tried my servant, Christian? God said, I hear you, devil. It's a lot of crazy stuff going on right now. But have you tried my servant, Micah? Have you been his way? He said, have you tried my servant, Mackenzie? David? Have you tried my servant, Mackenzie Wilcox? He said, have you tried my servant, Michaela? God said, have you tried my servant, Jamil? I know you say you've been trying all those other people. But have you, have you tried any of these other you? And the devil said, you know what? Maybe I haven't. That's when hard times hit you. That's when it seems like, well, why is this happening to me? Because God's sitting back while Satan trying to brag about all this stuff you see going on, and you see in his social media, and you're like, why is this going on? This world is crazy. That's because the devil's sitting back laughing, trying to make you believe, yeah, that's because I got the whole world. But at that same time, God says, well, you see that person that's upset right there about the state of the world? Go try them. I bet they won't break tomorrow. Go send somebody their way. I bet they won't get out of character. I bet they're going to stay in control of their emotions. Go send somebody that way to try to fight them. I bet they stay in firm. Come on, so God's sending, God sending, God sending them your way. So we got to stop looking at the things happening to us. It's things that are happening to us. That's good. And instead, we got to look at the things happening to us. It's, it's things that are happening through us. Okay. And we got to look at those things happening through us as a, as a way that God is using to display his power through us. Okay? So the next time somebody is challenging you, the next time somebody is trying you, the next time your op comes trying to talk about you or lying on you or, or say something behind your back, I want you to repeat after me and say this. It's time, it's time for, me for me to help you see, help you see God's power. Okay, remember that, because I need y'all to say that louder with me and prouder with me, because next time I'm going through something this week, next time somebody come talking to me crazy on my job, I'm going to think about y'all like I do all the time, and the things y'all tell me in class, and the strength that y'all show against these people out here talking crazy. And I'm going to think about, hey, my students out there dealing with these type of people, and I know the next person that come up and try to fight them, the next person come up trying to curse at them, the next person come trying to take them out of character, they just go keep a straight face and look at them, and they, go, they might have to tell that person, it's time. For me, for me, to help you see, to help you see God's, power. God's power. Okay, the next time adult somebody come in traffic and shoot you a bird, or the next time somebody come and try to mess with you in a certain way, you, the next time somebody say, hey, you gonna let him talk about you like that? You go, he over there joining you. You gonna let him have the last word? Or they looking at you, they say, so what? You scared you ain't gonna fight me? What you doing? Why you just standing there? All you gotta do is look at them and say, it's time, it's time for, me for me to help you see, help you see God's power. God's power. Okay, so I just want to thank y'all for giving me this time. I want to thank y'all and all of you for this weekend. Okay, and I just want to remind y'all, you, you won't see, you, you, you won't know that power unless you are agents of the impossible. Okay, so those other kids that are, that are not understanding that, they're not agents of the impossible. They're not aligned with Christ like you. So don't worry about what they're not understanding. Move along and talk to God about it. Because that, that's, that's our intel. That's who we, that's who we going to. And he's giving you awesome power. And sometimes people not going to understand it. But, but God is using you to show powerful restraint that they've never seen before. Amen. God is using you to show powerful resiliency that they've never encountered before. Okay? And if you have not encountered God in that way before, and if you feel like that you're not a special agent, and you want to be baptized at some point today, you talk to me, you talk to Brother Reggie Osborne, you talk to Brother B, you talk to Brother Les, you talk to your parents, and you let them know, what, 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 what is this about being a special agent with Christ? Am I baptized? Am I not baptized? Am I, am I walking with Christ right now? 
And I'm certain that your parent or one of us youth leaders will help, will gladly help you get in the water of baptism. Sure. And once you take that away, it's nothing anybody could baptize you with after that. They could damage you. They could destroy you. They could kill you that God can't bring you back from. Sure. Okay, so I just want to thank y'all. And I just want to tell y'all and remind y'all, you know, don't run away after services. Because um, if y'all thought this was good, wait till y'all hear Brother Reggie this afternoon after we get a meal in. And Brother Warren Blakeney. And um, I just want to thank Sister Vanessa again and Sister Nadira and every single body. If you have um, participated in any way in the youth conference this weekend, I want you to stand up. Because you had Sister Toys teaching, Sister Shona teaching. So if you helped us in any way this weekend for the youth conference, please stand up. Yep, Sister Betty. Sister, Sister, Sister Prescott. Brother Elder Brooks. So, you know, thank y'all and continue to stay tuned into the youth conference. And, um, you know, just remember that next time you're going through something, people not understanding, crisis classified. All right? Amen. That television show of Mission Impossible. Yeah. Open up with team leader Tom Phelps having received a tape, and the tape said, Should you accept, should you choose to accept this mission? And then the tape went on to explain the mission. <clears throat> having now heard the word of God should you choose to accept God's mission on his terms and these are his terms so then faith come it by hearing and hearing by the word of God should you accept to accept the good news of the gospel, you have to place your faith in the one who died for you on yonder's cross. And then be willing to believe that with all of your heart. The way you believe it is you are now willing to repent of all of your past sins. And then make the confession that brought death to Jesus but will bring life to you. You see, the confession is when you come out of the closet. The confession is when you go public. We, we, we have too many secret agent Christians. It's time for, a, look, everybody else is coming out. Boy, I feel some preaching coming on here. Come on, everybody else is coming out. Why, why we want to go in and retreat when the world is coming out without shame? And then publicly be baptized in these waters by the authority of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that far, the forgiveness of your sins, should you choose to accept, would you now be willing to walk down one of these aisles, give us your hand, and give God your heart, as together we are standing. Show me the way. Show me, show me the way. I said I'm Say, show me the way, show me the way, Lord.
I'm your child, I'm your child, Lord, oh Lord, Lord, I, Lord, I'm your child. I do wrong sometimes, but Lord, oh Lord, don't you see how I hurt the Lord, don't you see how I hurt the Lord, don't you see how I hurt the I'm your child, say I'm your child, say Lord, 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 I, Lord, I'm your child. Down on this earth, I get trials, oh Lord, Lord, I, Lord, I am your child. With all these youth in the audience, I'm down here, Lord, and I need you. Church, say amen. Yeah. Let's church say amen again. Yeah. We're thankful for Chris and that message. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Excellent job, and we, we just continue to thank God for you and how you are, are leading this youth and working diligently, even through your own struggles. We praise God for you. We want to uh, uh, take time to acknowledge those who have uh, asked for prayer requests. Um, uh, Tamika Major is uh, requesting prayers for um, Mason and McKenna as they uh, continue to recover from the flu. Also prayers for uh, her aunt Alice King in Dayton uh, Beach uh, that lost her husband on Friday, Clifford King. So we definitely want to continue to keep her in our prayers. Uh, Desiree Williams is asking us to pray for her brother, Stephen Edwards, who is critically in the hospital with pneumonia and on a ventilator. And Kidney Dialysis has also uh, suffered a stroke. So let's keep him in our prayers and, and, and her and her family as well. Uh, Shona Nixon is asking us to pray for Sister Trini Williams. She's in the hospital undergoing tests to find out the source of uh, her severe headaches. I pray for the, the source of her illness to be found and to be treated. Also pray for Jamel Wright, the son of Sister Felicia Wright, is homesick with a high fever. Uh, Brother Anthony Cooley is asking us to pray for him and his family. He also wants us to acknowledge prayer for his son, Jai, who is not feeling well uh, with a slight fever. Also pray for his family, uh, especially his niece during this time because this is the anniversary of uh, his sister, his niece's mother's uh, unexpected death. So let's continue to keep them in our prayer. And one second here. And uh, Sister Kelly wants to give a praise report uh, to, and glory to God that her aunt that we have been praying for yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. is out of ICU. Yeah. Yeah. Off the ventilator. Yes, sir. 
off all those other machines and she's in a regular room. I continue to pray for her recovery. Uh, and we, we, we just ask you to continue to pray for her. Uh, this is uh, our aunt when, when Kelly was uh, converted in, in, in Newark uh, many years ago. She was on fire for the Lord, and, and this is one of the aunts that she was able to minister to. And she gave her life to Christ along with, with her son. Uh, but unfortunately, you know, time has passed, and so uh, they've just been having a struggle staying connected to God. So continue to pray for them uh, in, in this regard. Um, also continue to keep all those others uh, in that we've been praying for in our prayers. Let us pray. Our Father, we come to you at this time thanking you, Father, for another day of life. Father, we come this morning just giving you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. Father, we just want to say thank you because if it not for you, where will we be? Father, thank you for all the love that you show us. Father, thank you for all the mercy and grace that you grant us. Father, as we come this day, we come for those who are going through sickness. We come for those who are going through illness at this time. And Father, we all know that death is always right around the corner. Father, we come that you just continue to bless those who are going through bereavement. Father, continue to allow this church, this family, this group of people be that light that shine for them to let them know that God is still able. Father, we come asking your blessing upon those that are going through procedures, going to see the doctor, doctor visits, and things of that nature. Father, we know that as long as you're in the, you are in the room, we, we, all will be good. Father, we come asking you just continue to strengthen us here, continue to bless us here. Father, we ask that you just continue to be with each and every ministry that you have allowed to begin work here, our Food for the Soul ministry, our children ministry. Father, and of course, we ask your many blessings for our minister, Brother Bar Barclay, and his lovely wife. Father, please just continue to bless them, continue to strengthen them, that they keep preaching and teaching what you have taught them. Father, thank you for all the things that we try to do here at the Stonecrest Church. Father, we thank you for just another, another opportunity to come before you and just give you all the honor and all the glory. Father, we ask for forgiveness of sin. Father, we ask for traveling grace for those that might be on the highways. Father, we just want to thank you for just allowing us to go to and fro without any hurt, harm, or danger. Father, we thank you for a successful trip, and we thank you for allowing us to get back here safely on last night. Father, please continue to just be with us and guide us. Just rest in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As we prepare for offering, uh, if y'all allow me, um, didn't that gentleman do a good job this morning? Michael, singing. Amen. And, and I hope I, I don't embarrass anybody, but it, it just, I was sitting over there thinking after we sung that song that he led, and there were years ago, and I can't remember the exact year, but uh, I accompany a group from, the youth group from Hillcrest Church of Christ to the youth vocal camp that's held in Rogersville every year. And um, I had this young boy that was staying with me and Eddie Norris in our room. And on one of those nights, headed back to the hotel after all those that powerful events that had happened during that day, he mentioned to someone, the young child, I'm ready to be baptized. And as we got back to the hotel where we were standing, staying, we baptized that young guy in that pool that night. Y'all, that was Michael. That wasn't Michael? Oh, that was your Michael. Chauncey. Oh, okay, Chauncey, Chauncey. Okay, yeah. But that, that just reminded me of that event and, and how powerful it is that our youth are reaching and searching for the truth and for God. And to hear that message from Chris and, and the youth that are involved uh, today in this event, uh, it, it, just, it just brought tears to my eyes over there. And I was just thinking about that event, a young child, you know, being baptized at that early age, wanting, wanting Jesus in his life. You know, there's power in the name of Jesus. And we have an army rising up behind us to carry on that. So I'm going to sing this song real quick. There is power 
in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. And break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Sing it again. Say, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. And there's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. All these kids, that there's an army rising up. So we break every chain, break the devil's chains, break all of the chain. Break, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Let's keep praising and praying for our youth. Amen. 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 We now come to the offering at this time. We now come to the offering at this time. <clears throat> just keeping with the theme, I understand this weekend was the youth. And just keeping with the theme, as I heard today, that uh, we've got some special agents. And Brother Chris, you know, special agents have special tools to get them out of a bind. They use these special tools when they need them. I just want to say, think about how many times has Jesus come through for you? How many times has he, you've used him as that special tool, whether it be prayer or whether it be just him keeping you out of danger. And if you would, just let's look at Let's look at a scripture for this. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 2. Forgiven and it reads, Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. Um, and everyone would you please bow with me as we pray over this. Dear Heavenly Father, you come to you humbly, you know how. Just thank you for allowing us to come together again. Just praying that each one which has purposed in their heart to give, that you may just allow them to search within themselves. Allow them to just dig deep and just give to you from their hearts, not out of necessity, nor out of grudgingly. For all these things we ask, let us all say amen. amen. And as you'll see a slide before you, there's plenty of ways to give. There are multiple ways, whether uh, online, in person, cash app. There's all these different ways. But even on today, if you got a little extra, I know a lot of places I go to, everybody has a tip jar now. No matter what the service is, there's a tip jar. So if you got a little extra you want to give God, or if there's something you made it out in a check or cash this on today, please raise your hand. And we got some brothers or ushers back here that will come to you and partake of that offering. If there's any, please raise your hand if you have an offering where you sit. looks like that is it and this concludes the offering. Let the church say amen. amen. Mic check. There we go. Testing mic check. As we prepare our hearts and minds for communion, uh, I am just reminded um, that Jesus died on the cross to give us the victory over sin and death. And he sits in heaven above right now waiting on us. So I was going to sing this song real quick. Who can stand against the Lord? And no one can, no one will. Who can stand? Who can stand against the King? Say, say, no one can, and no one will. Oh, oh, victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. 
victory belongs to him. Sing it again. Say, who can stand? Who can stand against the Lord? Says, no one can and no one will. Who can stand? Who can stand against the King? I'm singing, no one can and no one will. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. Say that again. Oh, 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 oh. say victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. We now come to another part of the service at this time, uh, known as the communion. And I guess I'm just reminded of John chapter 15 and verse 13. It says, greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for a friend. And so going with our theme, there's a special agent that we need to remember on this day. You know, this do we remember to me. This agent gave his life for each and every one of us. And as we remember him, just remember that he gave it unselfishly, unwillingly, when we didn't deserve. Scripture for communion that I'm going to read is 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning at verses 23. And he reads, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do and remember to me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink of it, and remember to me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Uh, would everyone bow as we pray for this? Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you once again, just praying for this bread which represents your body, and this cup which represents your blood, praying that whosoever partake of this will just partake of this with clean hands and clean hearts. And all these things we ask, Let's all say amen. amen. And if you have your emblem, uh, please open it and let's partake of the bread. Please, is there, there's a couple that need some emblems. If you could bring a couple down, ushers. Please raise your hand if you need one. Still got a couple raising their hand before we continue with the. Please raise your hand high so we can see how many extras. those that just received it, go ahead and open up your cup. Go ahead and take your bread for those that just received that emblem. All right. And for the rest of us, let's all take the juice together. Let the church say amen. Okay, one more thing before um, Elder Harrell carries on with uh, some other announcements. I was reminded to, to I didn't, I thought I did, but we did not have the youth stand up. So if you are youth in the room, please take a stand. Uh, all my young people, all the youth from all different churches, take a stand. Yes, indeed. And y'all are, y'all are most to be acknowledged this entire weekend. Cause that's, that's, it was for y'all. And, um, and y'all obedience to the Lord and to y'all parents, y'all will come. And, you know, these youth that y'all saw stand, they didn't just come and sit around like my parents made me do it. They came. And, um, I mean, until y'all see the videos and pictures, y'all won't know. Uh, some of the teachers know, but they really, they got into it. They participated when it came to the talent competition and the Bible Bowl. They didn't just come because my parents made me. They, they showed up, and they showed out. They participated, and we were very proud of um, how much dedication they gave to the work that we put in. So. Shout out to y'all. All right. Good morning, church. Good morning. Uh, hasn't it been a wonderful weekend so far? 
uh, to, to our youth minister, Chris, as well as Sister Vanessa. We, we definitely appreciate the work that you guys have put in. Uh, and and we, want, we want the church to know that the leadership, we definitely and proudly support the work that our youth minister is doing for this particular ministry. So, you know, we've told, Chris and I have talked uh, uh, individually and we've said uh, as, as other churches have achieved success with their youth ministries, that we definitely will support Chris as his desire to go learn from people that have done things already, successes that they've already achieved. We will definitely support Chris and his desire and his endeavor to go learn from people that have done other things and things like that. So we just want to let you know that we support you. The leadership here at Stonecrest definitely supports you. So this part of our service, we like to recognize our visitors. Chris, is this uh, jo Joya or Joy? Neil. Joya? Where's, where's, where's Joy? Oh, I got you. Joy, <laughs> Joy, this is Joya uh, Neal. She's a guest of Chris. Joy is from Hillcrest. This, this part of our service, Joya, as well as the, the other guests here, this is where we recognize our visitors. And we want you all to know that at Stonecrest, you are not just visitors, you are blessings to us. And we appreciate you all coming, and we appreciate you all worshiping with us, and we'd like to say thank you very much. So not only Sister Joya, but we also have the Temple family. Where's the Temple family? The Temple family. Please stand up so we can recognize you, if you don't mind. This is the Temple family. And they're from McDonough, and we'd like to say thank you very much for coming and worshiping with us this morning. This is, this is one of our local uh, visitors, and we, we love having local McDonough families come and, visit, come and visit with us this morning, so thank you very much. The Tompkins family, where's the Tompkins family? Good morning, good morning. There are also guests from uh, Hillcrest Church of Christ, and we'd like to say thank you and come back anytime and worship with us. We enjoy having you. Uh, Sister Regina Johnson, where are you? Good morning, good morning, Sister Regina. She's guest of Chris and Tamlin, uh, and we'd like to thank you very much for coming in and worshiping with us this morning. Thank you. Brother David Wallace, where's Brother David Wallace? Good morning, sir. Good morning. Thank you and your family for coming and worshiping with us. Brother Wallace is also uh, a member at uh, his home church, is Hillcrest Church of Christ. So thank you uh, very much for coming and worshiping with us, you and your family this morning. Just a, a couple of brief announcements. Uh, the, for the uh, leaders, uh, ministry leaders, uh, and the event planners, we just wanted to remind you that uh, the deadline uh, for the due date for this uh, budget, 2023 budgets, is due uh, tomorrow on the 31st. So make sure you get those uh, budget requests in if you have not already done so. Also, what am I forgetting? We have, this is the, the 30th, as, as uh, Brother Barclay has so eloquently reminded us, the 30th, of, but we have another day. And on the theme of all of the events and all of the, our sermon from Chris and our introductions that we've had, we have a surprise for Brother Barclay this morning. Our, our uh, lead dog, Brother James Williams, has done his magic as he did during the anniversary. He's put together a presentation that I don't think Brother B knew anything about. <laughs> but we got a surprise for him this morning. So if you would just give us, I think the, the total time for the video is six minutes. So if you would just give us six minutes. <laughs>
Thank you, thank you, thank you. I told y'all last week I hate surprises. <laughs> but that was a very pleasant surprise. Lee Dog, man, thank you uh, so very, very much. Um, uh, thank you for all of you uh, for remembering us. And October uh, is Pastors Appreciation Month all across uh, America where churches uh, simply uh, take uh, the course of that month, much like Breast Cancer Awareness Month, just to not only bring awareness to breast cancer, but also to uh, appreciate uh, uh, his preachers, his pastors, uh, and his wives. Uh, listen, um, uh, uh, for, for all that you have brought us this month, uh, my favorite uh, cakes, uh, I got my crab legs, uh, my Japanese meal, my fish is coming, my pig feet, uh, uh, my special pecans, uh, my oxtails, my banana pudding, my sweet potato pie, uh, crab legs with Cheetos and butter, uh, my special cookies, 
uh, my fish dinner, my Callaway golf ball and gloves, my Mexican meal, uh, plenty of cash. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let me try this out again. <laughs> yeah, uh, plenty of cash. Uh, in fact, uh, and gift cards. Thank you so much. Men's ministry. Uh, guys, thank you all for uh, your really special gift. Um, one of the members sent uh, uh, me a gift to my house, uh, and it was cash. Um, not feeling well all week long, I came down, and, and, and Shirley was in the kitchen. She had opened up the envelope. Uh, unless she had the unmitigated gall <laughs> to say to me, here's your half. I said, my half of what? <laughs> and uh, it was from uh, 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 Sister Elizabeth Lewis. And uh, she said, here's your half. I said, first of all, why are you opening up my mail? I said, my name was on that envelope. Uh, I said, we need to talk about your half. I said, now, when the ladies of the church gave you flowers last Sunday. You didn't give me half of them. <laughs> you ain't preached no half sermons. <laughs> you ain't taught no half Bible classes. And then dog, she, she, she had the gall to say to me, yeah, yeah. Uh, hush Shona. <laughs> she says, by the way, uh, where is half of that German sweet chocolate cake <laughs> that Belinda cooked for you? I said, now you're just being nasty. <laughs> just being nasty. Uh, listen, you all have been gracious and extremely generous uh, all month long. And on the behalf of uh, Shirley and I, I thank you so very much for uh, remembering us, and we appreciate and love you uh, passionately uh, and dearly. Um, uh, again, we will acknowledge uh, uh, a lot of this in a personal uh, kind of way. Uh, we just want you to know to all of you, we thank you so very, very much. Listen, we don't want this day to end because she does so much for uh, so many uh, others. It's blending in the house. Somebody run and get her uh, because uh, today is Blunda's birthday. And uh, she's always doing stuff for uh, everybody else. Uh, and we just uh, want to take the time uh, to thank her now. Uh, let's also uh, just be consistent and recognize all of you get, that have birthdays in October. Uh, as well as anniversaries. So if you got a, if you got a, ha, wait a minute, have we done this already? Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, while she's coming, we'll do it again. Uh, if you got an October birthday, raise up your hand. Just, just raise up your hand. That's right, that's right. So Simmons, Dolores, um, I saw somebody hand over here. Uh, well, listen, uh, happy birthday in uh, October. Uh, and uh, anybody get married this month? Anybody get married this month? <laughs> Shona, you got married this month? Today? Today? 27 years ago. Today. Today. Yeah, well, Sus Bishop, thank you, and congratulations to you and uh, uh, Elder Nixon. 27 years today. God bless your heart, girl. God bless your heart. Uh, Blundy, uh, we just wanted to take the time since you do so much for, uh, for so many other people, just, just to take the time to, to wish you a very happy birthday uh, on today. God bless you and God keep you. Okay. There was one announcement that I forgot. Um, that's why I'm standing up here struggling with it, trying to remember it. But uh, about a month ago, the uh,
Coronavirus Task Force. Uh, we met, uh, we reviewed both uh, the CDC and the Department of Public Health. We reviewed their data, and, and I think it's a blessing that we all are becoming aware of, that, that the data shows that the infection rate, not only through Henry County, where our church is, but the surrounding counties, was improving, and it improved to the point that the task force recommended to the leadership that we transition from our mask mandate to our mask option mandate. So we recommended that, and as we always do, our procedure is that the task force makes recommendations to the leadership and then the leadership in turn votes on that. Our leadership voted on that this past Tuesday at our meeting and approved that uh, mask uh, optional transition. So we wanted to announce it uh, today that it will go into effect uh, next Sunday. But we also want everyone to, to be uh, diligent, vigilant. That's the word that I was looking for. Be, be vigilant. You, we've, I think you all can say that this church has been blessed throughout two years, uh, almost three years of this virus, and we've truly been blessed. We haven't had any significant breakouts, uh, and we haven't uh, had any uh, significant We've had people get sick, but we've been blessed. So what we want to do is we want to remind people that this is the flu season, uh, as Brother Barclay said, uh, and it will transition. We will have uh, symptoms that will appear to be one. It will look like the other. Uh, Brother, Brother Les has blessed us uh, with a purifier, so we've taken uh, steps to try and protect uh, the body and the members of this congregation as much as we're able to. So just wanted to make that announcement that next Sunday we'll transition to mask options. Uh, make your own decisions for you and your family. Uh, be respectful of others uh, and, and how they feel about wearing their masks. So we just wanted to make that announcement. Thank you very much. We also want to uh, acknowledge the fact that this is also the anniversary month of uh, Brother and Sister Wilcox. Where are you guys? All right, how, how many is that for you all? 16. Congratulations. Let's all be standing for the benediction. Father in heaven, as we again come to your throne of grace, Father, we come always with thanksgiving on our hearts. Thank you for this day, Father, for the message that was taught to us today, for all that was happening, Father. And we just pray that you bless those who have requested prayers and those who haven't and have the courage to, uh, to request it, Father. We ask that you bless them with their request, Father. We thank you again, again for our minister and his wife leadership here at the Stonecrest Congregation, Father. Thank you for the work that they put in, that they make sure that we get your message and that we are up to date on all that is around us, Father. Again, we thank you for each and every one of us here. We ask this prayer in all prayers. In your loving son, Jesus' name, amen. Amen.